Hey there, welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm Elizabeth, this is EBITDA Studio, and this is just a quick update of some of the things that I've been working on and a recap of the Korean textile tour. So I know you're gonna be interested in hearing all about that. So just before I begin, I have a couple of quick announcements to make. If you're watching this um, in November 2023, when I'm recording it, I do have some live Zoom workshops coming up. So if you're interested in taking a class with me, these workshops can be accessed from anywhere in the world. They are live on Zoom. And so on November 30th, I'm doing the Glimmer workshop. So this is a uh, reversible Pujagi patchwork window hanging. It's a three hour workshop. If you've never done this type of sewing before, this is a great beginner workshop. Um, it is made with six fat quarters, three of one color and three of another color. So if you have any fat quarters that you purchase on impulse, you don't know what to do with them, this is a great project. It uses batik fabric because that is reversible. Um, if you don't have fat quarters, you can also use regular quarters and you could substitute three quarters of a yard of one color and three quarters of another color. And then it's just done with two fabrics instead of six fabrics. So there's a lot of options there, but it's a great beginner project. And sometimes I do have beginners finish the whole project in the three hour workshop. So I'm not gonna promise you can do that, but it does happen. So it is a very um, short, doable project. I also have uh, the Christmas tree window hanging uh, workshop coming up. That's gonna be on Saturday, December 16th in the morning of Eastern Standard Time and Tuesday, December 19th in the evening of Eastern Standard Time. So you'll have to do the, um, <coughs> you'll have to do the uh, switch of what that is in your time zone. But I try to get different times so that people from different time zones can join in on that. The Christmas tree is another um, fun project. It comes in two different sizes. So the small project, it could be done um, within the workshop time or pretty close. The bigger one, you're gonna have some homework but it's gonna be easy. You're gonna know exactly what to do after doing the workshop. So that's another good one. And another um, workshop that I have coming up is Hardanger workshop. So this is a counted thread embroidery technique. It has cut work and filling stitches. And this is a beginner workshop for people who have never done this type of embroidery before. And you might've looked at it and been kind of overwhelmed and thinking this is too difficult. I would never be able to do that. But I can tell you if you can count to four and you can count to five, then you can learn this embroidery technique. Um, this is actually a has a workshop with three sessions. So it's three Friday mornings in a row, December 1st, 8th and 15th. And it's in the morning Eastern Standard Time. Um, so if you're interested in any of those workshops, I have the links below. I would love to meet you there. And it's always fun to uh, meet new people, learn new things and to make a beautiful project. Um, another exciting announcement I have coming up is with the uh, Canadian Quilters Association, I'm doing a webinar on December 13th. So this is a live lecture on Zoom. And my, the title of my presentation is, When is a Quilt Not a Quilt? So I'm gonna be talking all about reversible patchwork, um, projagi, uh, that kind of thing. I'm not gonna give it all away, but things that are quilt, quilt adjacent, but not specifically quilting. Uh, but quilters are usually really interested in that. So that is on December 13th. But if that time zone doesn't fit for you to be able to watch it live, they do record it and it's available for two days following. So if that's the middle of the night for your time, you can watch it later on your own schedule. Um, you do not have to be a member of the Canadian Quilters Association to join the webinar. It's open to anybody, but if you are a member, you do get a discount on the ticket price. So I will put the link below on that so you can find out about that webinar. That is really exciting. 
Um, I do have some things that I've been working on that I just want to share a little update. I am almost done the um, embroidery embellishment. This is a sneak peek of the December Quilt Block Mania Quilt Block. So this will be available for free during the month of December. The pattern will be available. Um, and then after that, it will be available in my shop. So if you follow along with Quilt Block Mania, there are a whole bunch of quilt designers and they design a block and every month it's available for free during that month. So um, mine have been kind of traditional blocks with hand embroidered embellishment, but there's all different um, types. Some are um, applique or different kinds of piecing. So you can check out Quilt Block Mania <clears throat> um, just to see some of the different things and they're all blocks around a specific theme for each month. So you can be watching for that in December. Uh, also, as I alluded to before, I just got back from the Korea textile tour, which was an amazing tour. I have a lot to say about that. But if you remember my last um, floss tube update, I talked about some projects that I was bringing for stitching for on the airplane and train and traveling. And, um, and so I have some things that I finished. So this piece is a little embroidered tea towel. And the, um, the design is from a YouTuber called Green Wrapper. I'll link to that below. That is where I got this design from. Um, I stitched it with variegated thread. So I love how the colors turned out on here. This is such a fun project. And um, Sashko is a great stitching project for traveling. It's great because all you need is needle fabric thread. You don't really even need scissors uh, because your thread is kind of cut to length already. Um, you don't need a hoop. You don't need any other equipment. Um, so this was a great project for doing on the plane or as we we're driving on the train. Um, it was a great project. And when I was preparing this and I was drawing the grid on the fabric, I was kind of inspired to try um, some other ones. So I had some other tea towels that I had that were just plain white cotton tea towels. And so I just drew grids on those to do some other Sajiko designs. And I just did little bands on them. So here are some of them. I just used pearl cotton thread that I already had um, it's thread that I've had for a long time. And so you can see I got quite a lot of stitching done on this trip. Um, so that was a great project. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Uh, and the last thing I'm going to share that I'm working on is um, it's kind of related to my um, quilt. Cool my uh, Canadian Quilters Association webinar. But I've been thinking a lot about um, reversible patchwork and Pujagi seams. And of course, if you've seen my work at all, you've seen I've made a lot of batik fabric window hangings. I love those window hangings, they're very beautiful. They look like stained glass, but there are a lot of other ways that you can use that seam. And anytime that you want patchwork but you don't necessarily want a quilt then that is a great uh, great option and it's also really good if you're thinking about sustainability and cutting back on fabric waste then this is a great application and so i had some blankets just regular thin cotton blankets and some of them are getting worn out one was even torn in a place and so I didn't want to throw them out because there was a lot of good fabric still in them, but I began to think, how can I upcycle and repurpose these? So I took some of them and in the summer, uh, my daughter and I, we dyed them. This was my first experience of doing any kind of dyeing. It was not natural dyeing. It was just buying a kit of dye in a box and using that. But I dyed these um, blankets and so I got six different colors. I got light blue, dark blue, um, orange and green, and light pink 
in dark pink, and then I cut these blankets into rectangles. So I could cut out the worn places where it was torn and use the good part of the blankets. You can even see on here, some of the stripes from the blankets are still in there. And now I'm putting these pieces together to make another large blanket that cuts out the worn places. And it's gonna, I think it's gonna be really fun. Um, I'm joining them together using the reversible patchwork Pajagi seam. Um, I found that the uh, uh, regular seam method that I use, it doesn't work as well with this blanket fabric because you can't, it's difficult to press a crease into this fabric. So the pressing is different. And so I've come up with a variation on that seam technique. So I'm gonna be making a video, it'll come out in a couple weeks, for what, how I am um, switching this seam technique for using with this heavier blanket fabric and fabric that doesn't um, crease really well. And so if you have any old fabric like this round, then this is a great thing that you might wanna consider a way to upcycle, to keep some of that waste um, out of landfills and to be able to make something beautiful with what you have. That is, um, that is kind of the whole um, history and feeling of Pujagi patchwork is using scraps of what you have to make more fabric. So I don't wanna give away everything from my webinar, but I'm really excited about this project. So you'll be seeing updates about this. So that's all what I've been sewing. Now I have to talk about the Korea textile tour. So the Korea textile tour is run by a um, Korean American woman named Yang Min Lee. And Yang Min Lee and I have been uh, kind of like Instagram online friends for a few years. I love following her work. She does traditional hand stitching, um, Korean hand stitch pujagi, and a lot of things she teaches workshops and um, online and in person. So if you ever have a chance to um, take a class with her, highly recommend it. But we've been um, Instagram friends for a few years. And I know they say, um, don't meet your heroes and Instagram isn't real life. And um, some things don't translate into real life. But I was so excited to find that young men in person, she is just as kind and generous as she is online. Um, her online presence is not fake. She's just as um, nice and knowledgeable in real life. And so she runs the Korean textile tour and this is a small tour. So there's only 10 of us in the group. And because it's a small group, it's very flexible. Um, and so it's not a tour where six months in advance, you get a set itinerary and you know, Wednesday at 2 p.m. you're gonna be here and you have only 30 minutes to do this and then you're on the big bus to go somewhere else. It's very flexible. Um, if people want extra time, then we could adjust to that. Um, if there were a couple times where people were tired or they weren't as interested, so they just did their own thing on that day and they didn't um, come with the group and that was not a problem. So it is a group for people that are independent. Um, so they aren't gonna be tied to a tour guide. You have to have a certain amount of independence. Uh, but it was an amazing, amazing tour. Highly, highly recommend this. If you're interested in Korean textiles, you're interested in um, Pojagi, you're just interested in textiles in general, this was a wonderful tour. Now, now Youngman does have two more tours coming up in 2024, one in May and one in October. And I just found out she released those dates and they were sold out within one hour. So um, if you're interested in those, you'll have to um, get on her mailing list and then you can get on a waiting list. Now there was 
somebody on the tour that I was on and she had been on the waiting list and then a last minute cancellation occurred and she did get in on the last minute. So it is worthwhile to get on the waiting list or you can start to plan ahead for 2025 and that will give you a good chance to uh, maybe learn some Korean phrases, learn how to read Korean. Those are helpful for the tour, although not necessary. But if you're planning that far in advance, you would be able to do that. So uh, Yang Min Lee, I met her on the first night I arrived and I came a day early so that I could help to adjust to the um, time zone and get a little bit acclimatized before the tour started. And even though I was a day early, the tour hadn't even officially started yet. She came and welcomed me at my room. She brought me dinner, uh, which was a huge surprise. And everybody in the tour got this beautiful little drawstring bag. It has this design that was designed by Jen Hewitt, an artist. Um, and it was printed, and so these were official Korean textile tour um, bags. It had some little treats in it, like a um, notebook, a pen, some candy, tissues, uh, maps of the area where we were. So that was a really nice treat. Um, I immediately started using it for my stitching. I put my travel stitching projects in here, but this was a beautiful thing. And then I'm just going to share some of the highlights of the tour. So this is not in chronological order. This is not exhaustive. We did more things than what I'm going to share, but I'm just going to share a few of the highlights. And then I have, um, at the end, I'm going to show you all the stuff that I bought when I was there. So the uh, first place we went was the Seoul Museum of Craft Art. So this is an amazing museum and it has one whole floor um, dedicated to traditional Korean embroidery. So you could see some embroidery and then another floor was traditional um, Korean pojagi. And of course, if you follow my work, you know those are things that I am super interested in. So it was amazing to go see this whole museum with that had large galleries devoted to those. I took a ton of pictures. I'm not a great photographer. And of course, in a museum, it was dimly lit to protect the things. So I also was able to purchase this big book. It's pretty thick, but it has pictures of all the um, exhibits. So this is an amazing book. I'm excited to be able to spend some time um, looking at this. And it's all about the um, embroidery and bloom and Pujagi embracing daily life. So this is such a beautiful book. I'm looking forward to uh, reading that. Then on another day, this was kind of a bonus thing that wasn't originally planned, but young men had found around the corner from where we were staying, there was a small group that had kind of a pop-up gallery and it was also on um, traditional embroidery and Pujagi. So when I was there, I purchased this and this was um, sealed in plastic wrap and it was from this group's display from the year before. And I thought it was a book when I got it, but it turned out it wasn't a book when I opened it. It was these little um, cards that have pictures of the items. And then on the reverse of the card, it has close up pictures. So these are just beautiful um, pictures of all the pieces that were in the display from 2022. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with these pictures. They are beautiful. I'm gonna enjoy looking at them. I might um, put some on display around. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna um, display them but I was really happy to be able to get this. And that was another uh, beautiful um, gallery and uh, pop-up uh, exhibit that we were able to see. Then the, uh, the tour wasn't only about embroidery and Pujagi, although that was a big part of it. Um, it's a textile tour, so it included a lot of different things. So the one really interesting thing was we went to visit 
a, a traditional weaver. And so we were able to go to his studio. He had a number of different looms around and he specializes in uh, weaving um, traditional fabric. So some of his fabric would be used for restorations at museums and things like that. And then he also um, told us about some of his work where he combines traditional fibers. So he might use a silk and a ramy fiber together or a cotton and a silk or just different combinations like that. And so he gave us um, a book that he has, which is a catalog of some of the different um, fibers that he has and some of the different um, things that he has done. And then amazingly, he also gave us a little sample pack so we could get little um, samples of some of these uh, fabrics that he does. So that was very generous of him. Um, it was very interesting. A few of the people on the tour were weavers, so they were very, very interested in that. But even for people who had never done weaving before, it was really interesting to see and to learn from him. Uh, then another place we went was to a design studio called Okamoka. And the uh, woman who, who runs Okamoka, she is a pattern designer and she starts her designs with ripping paper. Um, and that was something that she did uh, when she was going through a difficult time. She shared her story with us and ripping paper was just relaxing and calming for her. And then she uses that to create work or to create art. And so we did a workshop with her where we were ripping paper. Um, mine, some of them got a little bit crumpled in my suitcase, but you can really see people's personality coming out when they were making their little pieces. Uh, mine um, tended to have a lot of white space and just a few colors. Um, so here's some of the things that I made with my ripped paper. And then she took um, pictures of some of the designs that we made. And um, on the computer, she put them into her, um, her uh, process of turning this into a pattern design where she would do repeats and rotations and mirror images and manipulate that to come up with a surface pattern design with our images. So here's a picture. You can see the surface pattern design that she did from mine. And so that was just really fun to see. Um, I've had a little idea in the back of my mind that I'm interested in learning surface pattern design. And now this just really concreted that for me, that I really do want to get learn more about um, surface pattern design and things like that. So at Okamoka, she does this surface pattern design and then she takes her patterns and she has it printed onto fabric and onto books and all different things. And then not only that, but then her fabric that is printed, she um, has a clothing line and a textile um, line of things that are made with her fabric. So you could buy fabric and there's different fabrics. There's cotton, there was like a heavier uh, cotton, there was rayons, there was different types of fabric with her design. And then also she sold clothing and uh, I think bags and things that were made with that fabric. So um, if you're interested in seeing more of that, then for sure, go to my Instagram. I have linked to her um, so you can see Okamoka and it's just a, such an explosion of color. That's the only way I can explain that. I purchased a skirt from her. Um, so this is a little example of the kind of thing. This skirt, um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get the skirt or if my daughter is going to steal it from me. I know she really likes this skirt. So we will see who ends up um, wearing it. But this is uh, just kind of a taste of 
her, her um, design. So that was a really fun workshop and a fun thing to do. Then, um, another of the big highlights is we left Seoul where we were for most of the trip and we went down to an area called Naju and there we were able to meet a master indigo dyer. And I think he is a fourth generation, third or fourth generation indigo dyer. So this is a massive operation, but he um, does everything from growing the indigo and to processing it, dyeing fabrics. And so we were able to tour the operation and see uh, what he does. This is another traditional um, art form. And I'll say um, Korea does an excellent job of trying to protect and celebrate the traditional art forms and the traditional crafts of Korea. And so this is one of those uh, things. And while we were there, we were able to do our own indigo dyeing. So here's a scarf that we got. And I was able to um, dye this myself and go through the process from um, dipping it in the dye pots and um, rinsing it, the whole process of that. And then we had this other scarf that was dyed in a different way. You can see that beautiful gradient on there. So this is one that we dipped um, in such a way to get the gradient. So that was so fun to do. Um, I don't really have any experience with natural dyes. And so some of the people on the tour had done a lot of dyeing. So they were able to ask the really technical questions and learn about that. It was brand new to me, so it was very interesting, but I didn't get all the um, technical detail that some of the more experienced people would have gotten, but I loved the workshop. It was so fun. And then after that, on the next day, we were able to do a workshop with uh, Master Jung's wife, who is an expert uh, Pojagi artist. And so we were given some fabric and we were able to um, do a sewing workshop. And so we made this little coaster and this is with silk. There's white silk and then silk that has been dyed with indigo. Um, this was just such a fun workshop. It was fun for me to be in a class, taking a class. Um, and I like this little piece. And then of course, we had to get fabric there. So this was um, fabric left from the project that they gave us. Then I purchased some light blue to go along with that and some white fabric. So I have some ideas for what I would like to do with this. So if you follow along, I'm sure you'll see updates of what I'm making with this indigo dyed fabric. Uh, and then probably the last thing I'm going to share with you, which is not the last thing that we did, but it was um, a uh, just a fun extra thing, is on the last day, we had something originally planned in the itinerary, but it was raining. And so young men, young men didn't want to take us to something that was outside. So she found a kind of backup plan and right near where we were staying, there was a, a quilt display. So it was a little, um, a little area that had five different galleries and each gallery um, artists can rent it for, to, for exhibits. And the exhibits change once a week. And so uh, one of Young Men's friends happened to have a quilt exhibit that was gonna be in the week that we were there. And so we were able to go there of course, I really enjoyed that. So this is not Pujagi, but this would be quilts with um, the uh, piecing, batting and backing. So like traditional Western quilts, but they were art quilts. So it was beautiful to see these. Of course, I got the book from the exhibit. So it's um, really nice to see those. And then as an extra bonus, it just happened 
the day after our tour was over was the opening day for the quilt festival in Korea. Quilt festival in Korea is a, the biggest quilt show in Korea. Um, it was a great show. And so a bunch of us who had already planned on being there a few days after the end of the tour, we went to um, the quilt festival. And so that was really fun. And we were able to see again, some of the quilters and quilt artists that we had met um, at this exhibit. Um, also, uh, the um, weaver was there and some of the other people that we had met were there. So that was really fun to see everybody again in this great show. And so that's just some of the highlights from the trip. And I'm gonna share what I bought because of course on the trip there was shopping. If you don't know, Seoul has some of the largest fabric markets in the world. And so of course that was part of the tour. Now I didn't go overboard with fabric. I was trying really hard to be um, thoughtful and careful with what I bought. If I went again, and hopefully I will be able to do this tour again, I would make a better plan ahead of time to think I would like this color and this many yards of this because it was so overwhelming and I was trying not to overdo it. And so I didn't buy very much fabric. Um, I have lots of fabric, I'm sure I will be fine. Uh, but if I went again, that's something I would do better is I would make a better plan for what I was gonna get. So the first thing I'll share is some of the fabric that I got at the market. So this is Raimi fabric. And Raimi, if you've never seen it, it's a natural fiber. It's kind of similar to linen, but it's pretty um, stiff, I guess I would say. And so I was able to get um, a bunch of this in an ivory color. And this is the width that it comes at. The widths range from 12 to 18 inches. Um, and I got some red and green. And then I got these fun colors, this um, lime and kind of purple. So I do have plans for what I'm gonna do with this. So you can, um, follow along and see what I'm gonna do with that. So that's Raimi fabric. And this is pretty difficult to find outside of Korea. And so that was high on my list of what I wanted to get there. Then I also um, got some silk fabric. And so I was able to get this um, large piece of white fabric. And my goal with this is I'd like to do a cathedral windows piece. I do have lots of tiny scraps of silk fabric, um, but I didn't have a big piece of fabric that I could use to be the base of the cathedral windows. So I got this to use for that. And then I was able to get this blue fabric and I'm hoping to use these to make some um, dumplings following um, young men's tutorial. So I'll link to that tutorial below and you can follow along and see how these turn out. I'm planning to make some of these as Christmas decorations. So I got blue because my tree is all blue and white and silver. So I got that for that. Um, and then the, uh, the only other fabric that I got at the market was this fabric. <laughs> and this is just um, heavy white cotton fabric. And this is used as base for a lot of things like home deck I items and aprons, that kind of thing. Um, and so I got some of this. Um, it should be really good to use for embroidery and for other items like that. And then this uh, little handkerchief I was given um, as a gift when I bought some of the Raimi fabric. So I have that as well that I might embroider. Um, and then uh, some of the other things that I bought is I got a bunch of silk thread. And so this silk thread 
is um, difficult to get in Canada, but I was excited to be able to get that and for a really good price, some solids and some variegated threads and there's different weights. Um, that's something that I maybe should have got more of that, but I didn't, I will be fine. But again, if I was gonna go, I would make a list and be more prepared. So I would be less overwhelmed when I was there. Uh, then, I got a bunch of other things at the market. I got a 12 inch patchwork ruler. This is fun because this is a um, metric patchwork ruler. So it's based on centimeters. I do have a large, I think the one I have is maybe 40 or 40 centimeters. So this is a nice 30 centimeter ruler. I got some Sashiko thread. I got more than this one, but some of it I already used on my other projects. I got a nice little scissor with scissor case. I got some um, silk pins and I got some Pojagi sewing needles, which these are difficult to find in Canada. Um, in next June, little heads up, I'm going to be teaching some workshops at Quilt Canada in Edmonton. And so some of these will be for that. So if you're interested in learning um, hand Pojagi traditional techniques, I'm going to have workshops there. Then I also got at the market some zippers. They were a really good price. And um, some of these little items that were a good price and they're just little frames that you can use to make embroidered or patchwork necklaces. These are necklace pendants and I got a chain for them. Um, this is a little bracelet and some little earrings, which I've never seen before. So uh, that will be fun. I do have a couple of embroidered necklaces that I like wearing. So it was fun to see these. There was so much selection. Um, so I got a bunch of those and I got these um, pins. They're just sewing pins, but they have little tulips on them. So I just got those because they were so cute. And I got another um, clover chalk marker. I use a chalk marker like this all the time, but it was a good price and they had a pink one. So that was um, fun to get. Then I got some other things not at the market. Uh, this was just at a tourist shop. I got a little um, scissor case. So this is like a little pocket. for storing scissors. So this is a traditional um, item for sewing scissors. And then I got this little kind of ornament that is based on a traditional um, pin cushion, which I've made the traditional pin cushion. I've talked about those, but this was just really cute. So I got that and I got a little thimble. And back here you'll see, I got another thimble. So I got um, one at the uh, at a tour shop in Seoul. And then another one I got later when we went down to uh, to Gyeongju, my husband came and we did some more tour stuff. So I got another little thimble there. And so these will be, I guess, for my collection. I have one traditional thimble that I made when I lived in Korea, but now I have two more. So those are just really nice. Um, and then at the quilt show, of course, at the quilt show, there were vendors. And so I bought some things at the vendors. I got some kits. And these are not um, Korean per se, but they are um, just beautiful patchwork. So this is a kit for a bag and it has applique and then for all the fabric included and the zipper and the handle. So everything's included in there. So I picked out this bag. I got a kit to make this little cat ornament. And again, it has everything in there. 
And then I got the kit to make this little um, kind of sewing kit travel container. It has all the fabric. And when I saw this kit, I thought it was to make this little um, travel bag that I would have to quilt it and put in a zipper, et cetera, et cetera. But then I found out when I was gonna get it that this is actually a kit and we're just applicating and putting on the cover. And it's already made with the zipper and you can see the inside, it has pockets, little places for needles and things. So that looks like it'll be a really fun project and it won't be as complex as I thought it was gonna be because I'm just piecing and applying the cover and then putting that on. So that uh, will be a really fun thing. And I got another um, leather handle for a bag. As you can see, I'm really kind of interested in bag making. So you can be watching to see what I make. And then I got a bunch of books here that I will share. Um, before I get to the books, I also got in Gangju at a uh, tourist area, I got a set of um, wooden ducks. Now, traditionally, these ducks or geese would be used um, in a wedding ceremony. It goes back hundreds of years in Korea and they would be wrapped in Pujagi. There's a whole um, history about that. Um, today, they would often be used just as decoration at a wedding or given as a gift. So I have been married for quite a while. I'm not getting married anytime soon, but I just really like those and want to have them. So now I have to make a pojagi to wrap them in. And so I will probably put these back somewhere in my background so you can be watching for these ducks. Um, I got some little cards, note cards, that have pictures of pojagi on them. Um, and then here's all the books that I got. I was able to get this book at the quilt show. So this is um, actually in English and it's about traditional Korean sewing, sewing hanbok and sewing all the other little traditional items. So that is really interesting book. It is actually out of print now. And so I was lucky to be able to get this. Um, this is a book I picked up, picked up at a uh, museum. I can't remember which museum it was. Um, it's a Korean book. It's a child's book, just about um, clothing and sewing. So I just saw the pictures and I thought it looked interesting. So I will have to go through um, if anyone's curious, I do have Korean books and I go through with Google Translate to see what they are. But this one, I love the pictures and it's about textiles and sewing. So I picked that up. Then I got some other Korean books just at a regular bookstore. So this is a book about um, embroidery. And so you can see it has some um, Korean designs and instructions. So I'm excited to look at that one. This one is um, a sewing book with different uh, projects and traditional things. Uh, this book, I do already have a copy of this one, but I was just so excited to see it in the store. I bought it, so I have another one. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it or in the future if I'll use it as a giveaway or something. But this is a beautiful book. It's also, it is Korean, but it's traditional um, pojagi and patchwork. Um, and so it is easy to understand, even if you um, don't read Korean, you don't know Korean, it is easy to understand. It has great projects to do. And then the last one, this one's kind of funny, but it's a Korean book. It's about Sashiko, so, which is Japanese if you don't know about that. But since I was doing all these Sashiko designs, um, I was excited to see this book. And again, even if you don't read Korean, 
Um, if you can follow pictures and diagrams, then it is easy to understand. And then um, just the very last thing to share is this was from the uh, one of the museums in Seoul. I can't remember which one. Not the craft museum, but just a regular historical museum. And I got two of these, and these are called Bo, which I've never seen that word spelled with an H before. I've seen it spelled just B-O and sometimes P-O to be a wrapping cloth. So that's the same, the root where Po is where Pojagi comes from. Pojagi spelled with a B is the same word. And so these are just wrapping cloths and they're printed wrapping cloths. And um, so we got these. This one is printed to look like it's patchwork. And so it's just a wrapping cloth to be able to wrap things in. So it's really pretty and I'll be able to uh, wrap things in that. So um, if you're interested in the Korea Textile Tour, as you can tell, I highly recommend it. If you wanna see uh, more pictures or more information, uh, go onto Instagram and you can see some of the posts that I made. I'm still finding more pictures on my phone and I'm sorting through. So I will probably be still posting more posts about it so you can see about that. Um, you can comment, ask any questions about it. If you're interested, go to Youngman Lee's website. I'll have that below. Get on her mailing list and then you can get information. You can get on a waiting list for the tour or start to think about 2025 if you want to do a tour. And I'm very hopeful that I will be able to do this tour again. So I will let you know if um, I get onto it at all. And then you could come on the tour with me. That would be so fun um, to be on the tour uh, with um, people who know my work and are interested in it. Um, so that is all for today. That is a lot of information and a lot of talking, but I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that you found this interesting and um, be sure to keep following EBITDA Studio to see more updates of the things that I'm doing. So um, have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye.